Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, I'll continue covering the games from the Doprastav Open with my round 6 game, which, uh, well, I think it was a bad game because I messed up the opening, I didn't really know it, and uh, then I should have lost, then I should have won, uh, and uh, in the end, well, we'll see what happened in the end. So anyway, um, I had some time to prepare for my opponent, it was... Uh, played in the morning on the last day of the tournament, so every day uh, the rounds were doubled, 9 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. So I had some time to prepare. However, uh, when I uh, got back to my hostel, uh, there was a party going on once again, so I, well, I could prepare, but I didn't really have the concentration, nor could I sleep properly. So I ended up coming to the game pretty tired, and I only got two or three hours sleep, uh, so I was basically devastated, but wanted to put up a fight anyway. It was a 200 point higher rated opponent who plays the Sicilian always, and he always plays knight to c6, or most of the time he plays knight to c6. Now I was pretty confident about uh, if he played e6 or d6 uh, setups, but knight to c6, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. And I asked my coach about some advice and he, he told me, just play bishop b5 and take on c6, that's simple. I didn't, however, know uh, the system well, nor did I know all the variations, so I ended up studying that uh, in the evening. So what happened in the game, e4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, I did play bishop b5, he played g6, which is the most common move, and now I took on c6. Now, taking with the d-pawn and with the b-pawn is common. Uh, b-pawn is slightly, uh, in my opinion, better for black, because this pawn is quite good in controlling the center, and he still has d5. So I was expecting b-takes. And here I wanted to play a move which was going to make him think, and it did make him think. Uh, in fact, he thought for a long time, and he thought throughout the game, so uh, he wasted most of his time uh, for the first 20 moves. I played the move c4, which isn't the best move. Uh, you can play d4, you can play knight c3 and then d4, you can castle, you can do a lot of things, but c4 seemed like a nice idea. Basically the idea is to reinforce uh, the d5 square, play knight c3 and then play d4. He played bishop to g7, now once again I can play d4 once again. But I didn't want to play d4 because I was looking forward to some closed positions. And I actually had a training session with my coach. Uh, half an hour ago we finished and we were looking at the game and uh, he didn't like my plan uh, when he explained why I didn't like the plan either. So what happened in the game, uh, knight c3, d6, castles, uh, I allowed him to play the move e5. Now instead of castling I can still play the move d4 but I didn't so he played e5. And now after d3, knight to e7, it's clear that uh, black wants to play f5 and uh, that my position is sort of cramped, I don't have that many attacking ideas, and this knight is bad in particular, it doesn't have too many squares, the only square potentially for the knight is the e4 square, so uh, Matei told me that the position is already easier to play for black and that he would rather have black, which I sort of agree with. But during the game I had an idea which I thought was fine, I wanted to play knight e1, f4 before he castles, because I thought it was too risky for him to play f5 before he castles. And by the way, at the end of the video I'm going to run an engine analysis as always, because I didn't analyze the game with an engine yet, I always save that uh, for the video. So okay, uh, I did play knight e1, uh, which seems sensible, to play f4 and then perhaps knight back to f3. Here he played rook to b8, which uh, is sort of a waste of time. Uh, we just went over some variation in variations in which I don't uh, defend the, the pawn, but it wasn't really clear whether the sacrifice was correct or not. So we were looking at f4 takes, bishop takes, rook here, and knight a4. But I think uh, after rook b8, the position should be uh, fine for black, and that I didn't gain too much by sacrificing the pawn, because now my rook is attacked, and it's not really clear what I should do. I do have some pressure on, on d6, but I don't think that's enough. So after rook b8, I played queen to a2. Uh, to defend my pawn, to be able to recapture with the bishop, and b2 is defended. He played castles, I played f4, and here he had a long thing, he played f5, which I think is the best move. 
Now there's a lot of tension in the center. Uh, there are a lot of options here. I don't have to resolve the tension at all. I can just wait. I can start developing my pieces. I can perhaps even develop my bishop to, to e3, which was an option. I can play rook b1, uh, but there are constantly issues. For example, if rook b1 then takes here and bishop takes here, so I'm losing the knight or the f4 pawn. So it's sort of... Uh, it's sort of cramped and I always have trouble uh, with this knight, so I ended up taking f takes c5 and after bishop takes c5 uh, I had an idea that I was going to play bishop f4 and if his bishop goes here I'm going to block it and if it uh, doesn't do something good I'm going to get my bishop to h6. If I manage to exchange his dark squared bishop then my position is going to be easier than it was before because he doesn't have a key de defender of the light squares. So I played bishop f4, but he found a good plan which I didn't consider at all because I deemed it too risky. Turned out that it was a very good plan. Bishop takes f4, rook takes f4, and now g5. Okay, I have to play uh, rook to f2 or rook to f1. I thought rook to f2 was better because it defends my b2 pawn. Here he played knight to g6, and now I messed up. And uh, Mate uh, thought that this was the biggest mistake of the game. Uh, I sort of agree now uh, when I think about it, but here I was still happy that I managed to, to exchange his uh, his bishop. And for some reason, before I played bishop f4, I thought that, uh, yeah, after he played g5, uh, after rook to f2, I didn't think that knight to g6 was a good move, but then I saw that it is a good move. I was basically looking at these variations, so takes, bishop takes, Rook takes, rook takes, queen check, and then I saw that rook f7, and I don't really have anything. I can get my rook into play and threaten this pawn, but it's basically not enough for the for the sacrifice. So after uh, knight to g6, I was thinking of a move, couldn't really find the move, and now, uh, in hindsight, it's clear that I should have taken, because if I take, then I liberate the square for my knight, which is a pattern I should have seen during the game, unfortunately I didn't. So basically if I take here, uh, he takes here with the bishop, I play my knight to e4, I have some space for my pieces, and this knight isn't a stupid piece anymore. On c3, it does nothing with my pawn on e4. So this would have been a much better plan. And basically after knight to g6, I had a chance to capture, which uh, we discussed at, uh, at the training session right now was the right thing to do, and basically the only thing I should have done. <clears throat> Instead of that, I ended up playing... A stupid move, I played b3, which defends the b2 pawn, does nothing really. I was looking at some pressure on c5 and stuff like that, but b3 is a waste of time and doesn't really matter. And now after he plays f4, I don't have a square for my knight and uh, he has an almost deadly attack. Rook to d1, however, my idea after b3 uh, was to be able to play rook to d1 and to play d4, opening up the position. Uh, queen f6, uh, stopping d4. Knight a4, my plan is now queen to b2. Uh, provoking the queen on this diagonal to be able to play d4, g4. And now uh, I want to be able to meet both f3 and g3 with a pawn push. So if he plays... Uh, okay, first queen b2, yeah. Queen b2 to make sure I can at least force a queen trade or gain a tempo, queen h4. And now uh, I have to do something about f3 and g3. If my rook is on f2, uh, g3 is a tough move to meet. I have to do something, have to move my rook and then he checkmates me. Uh, and if I take, then he checkmates me still. So here takes, uh, takes and queen is coming in. So I decided to move my rook. Now after rook to f1, whichever move he plays, I can play the other pawn forward and close down the position. So now if he plays f3, I'm going to play g3. If he plays g3, I'm going to play h3. Uh, so that's what I thought. Bishop e6 was played. Uh, now queen to d2. Uh, queen to d2, I want to get my uh, knight back into the game. And with this move, he was also threatening. If I push d4, he can take here because my queen is uh, here and the b pawn is pinned. So bishop e6 indirectly stops d4. So if I play d4, bishop takes c4. So queen to d2 stopping those ideas, re reinforcing the threat of d4. Queen f6, now I finally get d4 in, d4. Rook b to d8, and now this, this move is tough to meet. I mean, I, I don't really have an option. If I take, he takes, uh, he takes with tempo because my queen is uh, on d2. If I push, then, I mean, I undouble his pawns to, to his advantage, basically, and I don't even have pressure on d6, so I decided to play knight to c3 bringing my knight back into the center. He took on d4, queen takes d4, and now knight to e5, a great move uh, 
threatening knight f3 in many positions and uh, just destroying my position here, black is much better in my opinion. So to get out of knight f3 forks, I played king h1 on prophylactic move. He played queen to g5, queen to d2, stopping f3. And uh, the move I should have played, yeah, I actually looked at this position with the engine, but briefly after the game, I didn't uh, analyze the game completely. The engine mentioned queen takes a7, which seemed ridiculous at the time. I mean, he has a deadly attack. So he played queen to d2, now if f3 I take the queen, so f3 is not a possibility. So he played g3, and this made me sorry that I played king to h1, because now after h3, queen h5, he's threatening checkmate, uh, bishop h3, g h3, queen h3, and I'm, I'm losing the game. So now I played queen to e2, trying to force an exchange of queens, seeing that it's going to cost me the exchange. But uh, luckily for me, I calculated the variation and uh, managed to get an endgame, which is sort of good for me. I, I spent, yeah, I should have mentioned, uh, before the move queen to e2, I had about 40 minutes left, I would say. And uh, he had about 5 or 10 minutes. And in the next five moves and on calculating this move, I've spent all of my time and we were both in tightness. So here bishop g4 is a logical move. I cannot take, of course, the pawn is pinned. So knight to f3. And now uh, he can take immediately, uh, winning the exchange. But uh, rook f6 was played, coming into h6, which is really scary. So now I have to play king to g1, getting away from this, uh, from this attack. Now uh, reinforcing the threat on the bishop, because for the moment the knight is defending this square. But it's not clear whether I can take, because after h6, queen h1 is checkmate. So he took on f3. Rook takes f3, and he didn't uh, take the rook, of course, just winning the exchange, because that would relieve the pressure of the position. He decided to play rook to h6. But luckily for me, I saw this position, and uh, I found a way out. So, uh, the move I found was rook takes g3. The bishop is now pinned. He cannot take on h3. He cannot take my queen. He basically has to take my rook. After he takes my rook, which he was going to take anyway, but at least now I'm not getting checkmated, I take the bishop with check, he takes, I take with the h-pawn. And now I manage to get a position in which uh, I have six pawns, he has five, and the exchange, of course, he is better and winning, but uh, I played okay. So rook f8, this move is now threatening checkmate, uh, believe it or not. If I play a move like rook d3, trying to pick up the pawn, then this is just lost. So, okay, a funny checkmate maneuver. So after rook, rook to f8, I need to keep my rook on the back rank. So knight to e2, picking up the g3 pawn with my knight. He played rook to f2, uh, getting the a2 pawn. I have to do something. So knight takes, rook takes. Uh, I played knight to f5 here, uh, trying to pick up uh, the d6 pawn. Rook e6, knight takes, uh, rook a3 was played, rook to d3 now, because there's no checkmate anymore, because the pawn is not here. And here he played a5, which is a great move. Now he's threatening a4, winning the pawn, because my rook is undefended. So I played knight to f5. Uh, and uh, why did I play knight to f5? a5, knight, f knight a5... Uh, yeah, now if he uh, if he plays a4, then I can check him and then take. So at least I'm not losing a pawn. That's why I played knight f5. He took on e4 here, and I played king to h2, trying to get my king into the game, king f8. And now I was happy because this is walking into a pin, rook to f3. And at this point, uh, he played the losing move. Uh, he played the losing move, and I didn't uh, use the opportunity to win the game, unfortunately. Uh, by this point, we were both... Uh, horribly low on time. Uh, he, he had a minute, I had maybe two or three minutes, so very low on time, but I should have seen it, and uh, unfortunately I didn't. Here he played the losing blunder rookie one. After rookie one, I hope you can see uh, what I can do. So notice the king and the rooks, so I can check and then fork the rooks. And I did check, I played knight d4 check. And here, unfortunately for me, he played king to e7. If he hadn't played king to e7, I wouldn't have been tempted to take the pawn with check. Uh, as it turns out, I took c6 and just a bad move. So basically, if I play knight to c2, uh, he has a losing game. I mean, I can even play rook h3 here and, I don't know, here I can take the pawn, here takes, takes. Uh, 
might even defend the pawn here. I, I don't know, but basically the position is winning for me. I'm two pawns up and I would have won this easily even in sight not. At least I wouldn't uh, lose the game. There's no way I would have lost the game. But after knight d4 check, king e7, I took on c6 with check and believe me, I, I didn't see that I could that I could ford the rooks. It hadn't crossed my mind. Uh, only uh, after the game I saw that. So rook takes c6, uh, king d6 attacking my knight, knight to d4, and here I struggled on for a while. Rook a a1, king g3, rook e to b1, uh, king f4, uh, king c5, knight e6 check, king b4, knight d4, king c5, knight e6 check, king b4, knight d4, a bit of repetition, but now rook to a2, threatening the pawn, g3, uh, rook to d1, knight c6 check, king c5, knight e5, uh, rook to a3. This position, uh, well, it's better for black, but it's not lost yet. King g5, uh, trying to pick up the h6 pawn, uh, king d4, knight c6, uh, king e4, rook f4 check, and now after uh, king d3, rook f5, I wanted to trade the pawns, obviously, if he takes here, I'm going to take here, but he played rook d to a1, uh, and I basically cannot take. Here I played king h6, king c3, and now... Uh, after rook f3 check, king b2, uh, I had uh, I had a chance to draw, uh, I think, with this move. And if he takes, he can take here, king moves, takes here, and I pick up the pawn, and it's going to be really tough for him to stop me. Firstly, if he takes here, then I'm going to take here, and this is a draw. This is a draw. And after rook takes a3, uh, king h7 check, if he doesn't take on g3, if he starts pushing the pawn, then I'm just going to push my own pawn. And he's going to have to give up his rook, and my king is fast enough to, to stop his pawn. At least that's what I thought, so I'm going to see that. Uh, but after rook f3 check, king b2, uh, I took on h7 immediately, which is... I don't know... Uh, I don't know. Perhaps it's still fine because he took on b3 here. And yeah, now, yeah, this, this was the mistake. I shouldn't have exchanged the rooks, I think, uh, because I have much more chance with the rooks still on the board. Uh, I should have played uh, rook to f2 check. Trying to, I don't know, get some checks in here like this. And once he gets here, uh, I don't know. Perhaps he could have forced a draw. And he basically has to keep an eye out here. If he moves the king back, then I at least want a tempo and uh, I can try to fight on. But after rook takes b3, I played rook takes b3 to uh, thinking that I have a draw in endgame. Unfortunately, I didn't. Uh, king takes b3 and now, of course, I have to give up my knight. Knight takes a5, rook takes a5 and uh, I cannot push my pawn because he takes, so king h6. So king h6 and I thought that this ending might be drawing, but... Uh, it's not. King takes c4, g5, king d5, g6, king e6, g4, king f6, and uh, I gave up. Uh, there's there's no way I can draw this ending if I play uh, g5 check. Then then he takes with rook. So yeah, I have I have no chance here. So unfortunately for me, I missed a chance to win with uh, knight c2 forking the rooks and then I missed the chance to draw I'm pretty sure but I should have lost the game earlier because I played a bad game so let's see with an engine uh, okay e4 oh sorry okay e4 c5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 g6 bishop takes b takes uh, c4 yeah castles is a good move i played c4 which is still equal slightly better for white bishop g7 knight c3 d6 castles uh, e5 after e5 white is much better after d3 but yeah i don't know why really now it says it's equal knight e7 b3 b3 is not a stupid move uh okay uh, but later on it probably was 91 equal rook b8 uh, b3 here b3 here why queen to e2 castles yeah f4 isn't recommended i should bring my knight back to f3 but after f oof, oof. after f4 ef4 <laughs> black is basically winning plus minus one and a half f5 what f5 is equal if he takes he's much better okay let's see takes 
bishop takes h6 why why is he so much better i don't understand this i have no idea why black is winning here h4 the best move why can't i just bring my knight back okay g5 bishop e3 f5 I, I I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I don't see why this this would be losing. This is minus three for black. Okay. I mean. Okay, it's it's better for black, but okay. So anyway, after f4, uh, f5 was played. F takes c5. Correct. Bishop takes c5. Bishop h6 was better, but bishop f4... Bishop f4 is losing. Why is bishop f4 losing? Because of this check, but I was looking at this. Okay, bishop d4, bishop e3, g5. Yeah, so what? Takes, takes, knight here, c5. This is so much worse. Knight f3, bishop g4. So, okay, apparently this is much better for black, but I didn't see that. Uh, he took on f4, though. Rook takes f4, and yeah, g5. Rook f2, knight g6. Uh, I should have taken. I should have taken. Yeah. So this is what we were looking at. Taking on f5 is just a much better idea, but b3, yeah. b3, uh, bad. f4. Rook d1. Queen f6. Knight a4. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. G4, queen b2. Ooh, I'm so losing. This is embarrassing. Okay, queen h4. Rook f1. Bishop p6. Queen d2. Queen f6. D4. D4. Rook d2 b8. I should have taken on c5 and I'm almost equal. Wow. Okay, if I take on c5, the position went from minus 4 to almost equal. Takes, takes. Yeah, I'm not going to play knight d3. <clears throat> so anyway, knight c3 seemed sensible, but it's not cd4, queen d4, knight e5, king h1, oof, queen g5, queen d2. Yeah, queen g5 taking on a7, but how can I take on a7? Okay, queen here. Now I bring my queen back, g3, and I don't play h3. Can I play knight f3? No. Knight here, queen here, takes, takes, takes the rook, takes here. Why is this so losing? I, I don't see it. I have to give up my knight? Why? Mating 8. Ah, come on. Okay, let's figure this out. Knight d1 takes. Queen takes. Ah, okay, because I cannot move my queen. Okay, now I get it. So anyway, after queen g5, queen d2, g3, h3, queen h5, queen e2, bishop g4, knight f3, Rook f6, king g1, this is painful, rook takes, uh, I'm sorry, knight takes, rook takes, rook h6, yeah, now minus 2 after rook takes g3, f takes g3, queen takes g4, takes, takes, rook f8, knight e2 is correct, and this is only slightly losing now, rook f2 takes, takes, I guess this is all correct, knight f5, rook e6, takes, 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 a5, Knight f5 was the best move, rook takes c4, uh, king h2, king f8, yeah, rook f3, and now I want to see the engine say that I'm winning, and I think I am winning after rook e1. Uh, yeah, okay, uh, not too winning, but okay, let's see. Knight d4 check, king e7 was played in the game, and now, yeah, knight c2, knight c2 is plus 2 for white. So yeah, okay, I I was winning. Takes, takes. 
rook h3, he cannot defend the pawn, takes with check, king here, can I defend my pawn? No, I, I attack this pawn. So yeah, okay, this this was winning, no need to look at that. King e7, knight c6, check, and not too losing, okay, it's not too losing. King d6, it's equal after king d6, it's equal. Uh, yeah, okay, but with a minute on the clock, it was really tough to see. Let's just see where I thought I had a draw uh, in, in this position after king b2. King b2, uh, king takes h7 was the mistake. After king b2, I should have played knight here. And after rook h1 check, king here. But apparently it's just equal check here why doesn't he attack my knight oh yeah because i yeah okay here now i force his king to the back rank uh here here takes takes here defends here takes here threatening here here yeah this this is just a draw this is just a draw i had a draw but anyway, after king h7, rook takes b3, uh, rook f2 check here, here. Apparently this is still okay for me. It was a very complicated game. So anyway, uh, this was the point at which I could have done something. Uh, after rook f3, he played rook e1, gave me a chance to to get back into the game because he blundered. Unfortunately, after knight d4 check, king e7. Had he played king g7, I surely would have seen knight c2. Now that he gave away a pawn with check, perhaps he played king e7 because he wanted to tempt me into taking, which was really smart. But anyway... Uh, I was devastated, not because I lost the game, I should have lost the game out of the opening, but because I was so tired I couldn't see anymore and they had another game in the afternoon. This was Easter day, last day of the tournament. So yeah, a tough game and tough conditions to play it, uh, but a deserved loss I would say. I mean, had I seen Knight C2 forking the rooks, it, it would have been an undeserved victory. Okay, uh, thanks very much for watching. Please let me know what you do against knight c6 Sicilians. I would really uh, like to hear some recommendations because I'm struggling with the opening. And uh, stay tuned for more chess. Looking forward to, to your comments and thanks very much for the support. See you later. Bye-bye.